Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope today's episode helps you in your chromatic scales practice. We're going to go over some basics to begin with and then get into a new method that one of my teachers just taught me this past week. So um, a lot of people think after you finish a doctorate that you never need another lesson again, but my teachers keep taking me to school every time I talk to them. So uh, big thanks to Susan Dwellmeyer for the inspiration for this video. I've been playing just a cute little uh, character piece. It's actually kind of deceptively difficult. It's so easy to learn. You can learn it in, I mean, I learned it in probably an hour or two. Uh, but when you push it up to the fast speeds, um, it really, you have to be so careful to not let tension uh, come in. So... Okay, and I have actually a tutorial coming out on that next week. It's being edited right now, pro, a full-length pro practice tutorial. Um, but today we're going to be talking about these little uh, chromatic scales. So it goes... And they are pretty fast. And I have just a couple of tips uh, to start with, and then I want to show you this really cool exercise because I texted my teacher and I said, you know, depending on what tempo I end up taking, if it's that's sometimes it's hard to keep up. And I said, one thing that I don't like in my hand is I've got these long, lanky fingers, which I love for Rachmaninoff chords and things, but. I said sometimes, and I've been practicing to get rid of this, so it's not as evident, but sometimes my, my pinky could extend. It's not flying. I have a video called The Flying Pinky. If your pinky is extending straight up into the air, go watch that one first. That's a good preliminary exercise. But I said, what can I do to get rid of that even further and, and to relax that in the highest speeds? Because I don't have any problem in those speeds. And arguably, I don't have trouble in the faster speeds either, but uh, until you start putting it into these. And that's feeling pretty good because of this exercise she gave me. A couple of tips to start with. She said, first of all, make sure that you're assigning uh, every tone a specific finger. And that, that goes without saying, go study the Hannon scores. There's a couple of different fingerings with chromatic scales. So if you're new to chromatic scales, let's just go over this really quick. Basically, threes are on the black keys, okay? And then you alternate one, one, and then whenever you have two white keys in a row, you can go one, two. So first finger, second finger, okay? So if we're starting on middle C, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three one, two, three. So the piano is spaced out, obviously, with three and two black keys. Um, that's a great way to help get orientation when you're sight reading, so you don't have to be looking down at your hands all the time. But because of that, it makes chromatic scale fingering inconsistent. So it's one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three. So you have those pesky little one, twos spaced out, um, in an inconsistent uh, spacing. So just watch out for that. That's the basic chromatic scale fingering. And when you're first practicing that, avoid uh, extending out four and four and one. Like I, I actually just kind of tuck those under a little. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying grip it because I know there's gonna be people that have a lot of qualms with me even just saying tuck those under a little bit. But that gives you a really comfortable uh, execution. And any time I can use that fingering, I will. That's a stronger fingering than introducing four. But when you need absolute top speeds, uh, four is faster, okay? So the fingering that you would use, if you're starting on middle C, start with a two. I mean, you could start with one if that's the starting place in your piece, but the, if you start with a two, it'll be consistent throughout the octaves, okay? So two, three, one, three, one, two, three, 
one, two, three, four. So the A sharp has four, okay? And that's the only one that you're gonna use A sharp on. I think Hannon starts you out with thumb on middle C, so they start you out with one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, but then all of the other middle Cs are with a two rather than a one, and all the D sharps are with a three rather than a four. So I find that it's better just to start with the consistent fingering. Again, starting from middle C, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and so forth. And same thing coming down. So you can think of the, the big focus should be where you put your fourth finger, okay? But as you'll notice, as you get, everyone has a top speed, okay? Even the very best, fastest piano uh, teachers um, uh, or players in the entire world uh, have a top speed, okay? My top speed is slower than those guys. I'm just, <laughs> I'll come out and say it. I'm a pretty fast player compared to your average Joe, but... Uh, at the same time, I'm always striving for higher speeds too. And when I really am pushing myself, you notice that finger can flare out a little bit. So let's start getting into things that can help your hand relax a little bit more. First of all, being up on the tips and not moving too much can really help. And one thing I discovered this past week is I was playing, and I give this advice all the time to my students, I was playing a little bit on the side of my thumb. And as soon as I upped that posture a little bit, so from here to here, no one's really going to notice that when they're watching you. Uh, your teacher hopefully will notice that, but you're going to notice a big difference. As you stand that thumb up a little bit more on its diagonal tip, it can act more as a finger than an opposable thumb that can get heavy and kind of clunky. So that helped me be a little lighter in my hand. By the way, I'm, ta I'm teaching every one of these from my own personal experience. Um, I know that other methods of teaching might disagree with what I'm saying, or they might have different ideas that are very helpful also. This is just what's helped me, especially just in these last few weeks. And I've played fast things with chromatic scales, like La Campanella, like all those quick passages. Those are tough too. All of these things can apply to all of those, okay? So uh, standing that a little bit higher. Be careful when you do that though, that you don't start to play surfacey. That, that you stand your wrist up so high that you lose all connection with the keyboard, okay? So you can have a uh, middle of the road wrist, maybe even just a touch higher is okay, but, but just standing that thumb up a little bit will make it feel more like a finger than an opposable thumb. Be careful though, because your thumb is shorter. You don't want to stand it up so tall that your thumb has to reach down and kind of jab for it, okay? That's the first thing. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is add-on and how helpful this is. So I noticed that when I'm preparing for my four, the anticipation of going to four sometimes causes that pinky to flare up a little bit. So I will just sit on one, two, three, four, and I'm, and it's okay. You don't need to make your hand stand still like a statue, like, cause that actually causes tension. So a little bit of movement, but I'm just looking to avoid that. Okay, so I'm just looking to keep it pretty close to the keyboard. Almost thinking of keeping contact with the keyboard. Okay, and then... And keeping the whole hand compact. One thing that I see with a lot of students um, that you're not really seeing when I'm playing this, because I've fixed this in my playing, but playing way out on the edge of these white keys, so you have to completely extend your fingers to reach the black keys. Just stay right up along that that ridge of, of where the whites and the blacks uh, meet. Okay, so that should help. So as you can see, it's not a lot of in and out motion. It's just mostly It's mostly just kind of gliding along. Okay, now for the exercise from uh, uh, Dr. Duhlmeyer. She's uh, she studied with Leonard Shore and Leon Fleischer and um, here in Utah, Gladys Gladstone, who I think was also, uh, who may have been a student of Schnabel. So uh, amazing musical heritage um, with her teachers. But she said, I said, did someone teach you this? And she said, no, 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 I just made it up to fix that. Uh, errant finger and I was like oh my gosh that's so brilliant because 
I've come across a lot of different exercises and I've shared as many of them as I can remember on this channel. So, um, but this is really cool. Let me just play it for you. I was a little confused when I first heard it and then I'll explain it. So. Okay, and then, so that's in thirds. Fourths, sorry. And this is still new for me as well, but I love it. Okay, do you see what maybe that is promoting? It's promoting the pinky to hold, and then you can also do it in fifths. Sorry. Okay, so to hold down. Now, you might be, an alarm might be going off in your mind like, why would you want to hold that? That's gonna create extra tension in your hand. It's just a training exercise to keep that finger down. And I can tell you, it's a very meditative way of practicing. Let's go over the mechanics of what you actually do, okay? So you play a third with your fifth finger and then you're gonna do this, the basic fingering that we already went over. So two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. But anytime the thumb plays, you're going to play another third, okay? So we'll start with that one, okay? And then thumb, so I'm gonna go five, one, three. Oh, my thumb's coming up again on the E. So I'll play a third above it. Okay, that one has three notes before the next thumb comes in. Thumb, and actually we hold this the whole time because we want to train that finger to rest on the keyboard so that when we're playing it's not flaring up like that okay let's try it again i know that can be a little confusing the first time you hear it okay so again i want you to mostly focus on the bottom notes and if it's easier for you you could start with b and d because that's a thumb down on the bottom rather than starting on c and having it be a weird finger so start with b and d one two three one three one two three one, two, three, four. So think of them in groups. Each time your thumb plays the next one, reset the hand position, okay? Again. Okay, now do it smoothly without all that. It makes smooth connections. Okay, now do the same thing in fourths, okay? So anytime the thumb plays, we're just gonna play a fourth above it with our pinky and hold it down until the next thumb plays, okay? Five, one. Oh, no, 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 start with, um, start with B, sorry. One, two, three. One, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, okay? And then, uh, without those pauses in between. And I thought that was a very creative little exercise, and then you can do it with fifths as well, so start with B and F. One, two, three, one, two, uh. Okay, and you'll notice that your hand, your fifth finger, feels better. Um, you might not see a giant difference when I'm actually playing, but it feels a lot. That seems to me a little cleaner than when I first played it at the beginning of this video. That was not good. That's just me being an idiot. <laughs> there we go. big one coming up. The other thing is just to touch the keys as lightly as you can. Um, that's very helpful. If you listen to Volodos' recording. I can't maintain that tempo throughout. Like, um, I can hold on there and here isn't too bad, but when you...
it gets a little bit crazy, but but not touching the keys too hard, not pressing too hard. Uh, you want to practice playing to the bottom of the keys, so don't practice shallow like this. For, uh, I mean, you can do that to kind of lighten the touch, but... But it's a dangerous exercise, by the way, just touching the key tops. That's one of my favorite ways to lighten up and then adding a little bit more sound. And then just a little bit more until you have just the, the tiniest sound possible. But um, if, you're, if you're not careful, it can start to get shallow. But I hope that gives you some inspiration for chromatic scales. Again, you can do a lot of things that I teach in this channel, that I teach in uh, the free webinar. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. We go over all sorts of rhythms, um, different touches that you can apply that will help you. So those feature 10 of my favorite tips that webinar does itself. Um, and I will also uh, link a couple of links to my paid courses, which will also include that pro practice video next week coming out on the full tutorial of this, as well as a link for all the gear that I use to create these videos. I hope um, each of you are having a great week of practice. If any of you have any questions, please let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.